Did we get real change in Leon Valley? The change Leon Valley politicians constantly complained when the previous political establishment limited their speech. I became skeptical of the new crowd after the November 2020 election. Josh especially was unsupportive of me speaking at council meetings and was mad at me for attempting to film the first council meeting when he was sworn into office. Lately, it's gotten very bad. They're trampling all over the First Amendment. Without a doubt, the change Leon Valley politicians are worse than Savaggio's council. They formally banned by majority vote so-called political propaganda from city council meetings. Earlier this week, they conspired to block a Citizens to be Heard letter from one of Joe Stevens' political opponents. Thank you, Mayor Council. Evan Bull, Leon Valley. I'm going to start off with a couple of things first for make the rest of my comment it's a couple of audios that I think the citizens of Leon Valley should be aware of and uh, well informed of well I would say if, if, if you have to go against that type of rhetoric all right that was a phone call with between the mayor and Councilman Stevens about how the mayor feels about her opponent in the city council or mayor's race, specifically myself. Next. And get a little bit personal. Absolutely. And then when uh, you see no. that same guy doing the same Take thing over and over no. again, why are you handing this out, Evan? Why, 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 what's truth about it? What was the truth? Did she ever get a chance to defend herself in court like you did? Finding Phyllis. All right. And that was audio taken from an interaction at the polls between Councilman Stevens to myself, Drew Power, and another resident, my father, Douglas Bull. These kinds of interactions, this unhinged behavior, I ask... Is that truly the divisive behavior, the dysfunctional behavior, the disrespectful behavior, destructive behavior, and the dishonest behavior that this city wants in its leadership? I definitely don't think so. I have to commend the council and their supporters for getting together, for putting together those emails tonight. I was very impressed. The new level of fear that has been reached to go to such a new level of low. And I just had a few points, uh, some, some advice that when coordinating the same lie, uh, you might want to one, not contradict yourself in those lies and to kind of not say the same exact thing over and over and over. It's very well rehearsed, I give you props. And so that is kind of the behavior that we can see and expect from our elected officials and those that they purport to represent. They do not represent the whole of the city. They do not represent everyone who wishes for the drama to end. And that is exactly why I am running for mayor, because that is the kind of things we need to end here. All right? And when you're talking about dysfunctional dishonest, destructive, divisive. You pretty much embody that up here and embody that in your supporters. And it needs to end. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Uh, citizens be heard if you want. Um, no, there's not any other. I, I just had a point. Yes, I did put two. Huh? I did put two emails that came while you were in executive oh, session. I'm sorry. I didn't. I put those back. And oh, gave, I thought they were the no, I laid them on emails top that they had, you. that they had already re um, read. Oh, you included them in here. I just I clipped them all together. I thought we'd already read them all. I apologize. No, ma'am. I had them know. laid across the top. Um, Go ahead, while we're waiting. Yes. Point of information. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I think Councillor Stevens pointed out last meeting that letters, it says appearance, citizens may appear in person or by written appearance if unable to attend the meeting. And one of the letters that we received was written by somebody who was here in the meeting earlier and actually spoke during Citizens Be Heard. Um, and I'm not really sure who it was from because it's the, the email says it's from Drew Power, but then it's signed by Daniel Bolton. But both of those were them were here during our meeting. Oh. So I, I don't think. And this is an, uh, I have a second one from Justin Pulliam. So. I'm sorry. They are not here, correct. So, mm -hmm. but they were at the meeting earlier and they spoke at the meeting. No, not Justin. No, not Justin, but uh, Danielle Bolton and Drew Power were both here. And so the guideline is what? If they have to be here, uh, it says citizens may appear in person or by written appearance. Oh, okay, but if they're those. unable to attend the meeting. Okay, I see. All right, so then we'll just make it part of the record then, I guess. And then, um, anybody want to read this one? There we go. Just pass that down. <laughs> Nobody wants to read. But you do have Mr. Mata up here. Would you like? I have Mr. Oh, Mata. I love just standing here. I, no, no. I was I was way. recognizing you. I just wanted to get that no, no, squared away. Do you want to read that first, and then Mr. Mata, Mr. Mata, go ahead. I will defer to you. Um, do you want me to read it first, Eric? Yeah, go ahead. You can read it. I've been sitting around too much. Okay. Uh, dear Council. Councilman Josh Stevens would like to dismiss citizens as incompetent, stupid, and indoctrinated. The Changeling on Valley Tyrants are also deleting opposition speech on the Nextdoor app. Josh claims to be for the people, yet he does everything he can do to hide from criticism. He violated state law by hiding his phone number from the public, and he lied on multiple official government records after he was busted for it. He refused to file campaign finance reports this election, leaving the voters in the dark. Yes, Josh, the same person who authored and passed the transparency resolution. Just don't expect any transparency from him. Councilman Stevens has intentionally refused to comply with numerous open records requests. You don't have to take my word for it, though. On April 22nd, Josh said... This serves as official notice that I will immediately seize participation in voluntary compliance with open records request 041222-A. That's an erroneous perspective because compliance with the Texas Public Information Act is mandatory and refusing to comply is a criminal violation. It's amazing how quickly they become above the law. Then there is the red light camera issue. Evan supports the cameras. There's no doubt about that. However, since the status quo is that the red light cameras are already there, Evans' position doesn't make things any worse. On the other hand, the Change Leon Valley politicians campaigned extensively on ending the red light cameras, but they have taken no action to end or reduce the cameras. There are plenty of concrete things they could do, but they refuse to address the cameras. All they've done is talk about it a few times. Lip service has no value. Actually, I assign negative points for it. There is no practical difference in outcome between a candidate who supports the red light cameras and a candidate who pretends to be against them but does nothing about it. Let me be perfectly clear. Nothing has changed in Leon Valley since the day Mexican Padilla walked into City Hall. We might have returned some of the things to the original status quo, but nothing has actually improved as far as the general public is concerned. However, the mayor's team once again has a firm grip on City Hall, and most of the city administrators are pandering to them, even when they are breaking the law. There was substantial outrage after Savaggio raided a YouTuber's home. However, the illegal carry exclusion still exists at Leon Valley City Hall. The council refused to correct it because they are worried about upsetting the Democrat voters. They probably don't care much about it because they are above the law. Multiple council members have told me that they have concealed carried into council meetings. The whole system is designed to protect government masters from the people. A few days ago, ECCW commented, Gosh, Justin, 
Tell us how it feels to put a rhino in office and take all the credit for it. Good job. That's exactly what they are. Jed Hefner identifies as libertarian. Benny, Josh, and Will are Republicans. Have they done anything to reduce the government spending, the size of government, or taxation? Absolutely not. It turns out they unanimously voted to increase property taxes to the maximum amount permitted by state law without holding a public hearing. The maintenance and operations rate is the only rate set by council, and they raised it as high as they could without drawing attention to themselves. That's right, the side that is supposedly for small government increased taxes even though they had a 4 to 1 block to advance conservative principles had they wanted to. Instead, they keep growing local government. The Republicans in name only are exactly what is wrong with America. Don't blame Washington. Look in the mirror. Most government abuse occurs on the local level and change Leon Valley has failed. I think they are serving only themselves with big government projects and one-off approvals for friendly business owners. The Leon Valley polls close in just a few minutes and the election results will be announced later this evening. The system is rigged to protect the incumbents. You do not have to win by a majority vote. There is no runoff. A plurality wins. Even if Josh Stevens' two opponents have a strong showing, they are splitting the vote, and Josh will win tonight. As far as the mayor's race goes, I think 25% of the vote would be a solid victory for Evan Bull. Josh has all of the Change Leon Valley resources at his disposal, which includes a large email list, a list that I and others helped create. Mayor Riley is an entrenched incumbent with almost two decades in office. She knows most of the voters, and she has support from the local Democrats. It will take a large network and years of campaigning to defeat that network. Evan Bull's campaign message is weak. It's mostly been just reactionary to his opponents. I say opponents, plural, because it seems like he has had to run against both Riley and Stevens. Evan does not have a large or effective campaign team. Elaine Valdez and Daniel Bolton each put significant effort into their campaign, but Josh will benefit from riding the coattails of Mayor Riley. Nevertheless, it is great to see people challenging the incumbents. Every election should be contested. It brings a sliver of accountability to government. I published corruption reports to explain the misconduct and political scheming of government officials. Although I normally focus on specific instances of government abuse, the same types of situations and people can be found around the world. My hope is that some of the viewers take action to expose and correct the abuse in their communities. Unfortunately for Leon Valley residents, the competing government clubs are completely consumed with the petty personal bickering. They won't create any real change. Just mention Evan Bull's name and they lose their minds. They throw away all principles out the window in their frantic fight against the people they irrationally hate. The Change Leon Valley politicians have been in power for a year and a half, yet they are still campaigning against a city administration that is long gone. But what else can worthless politicians do when they haven't accomplished any of the major reforms they claimed they would implement when they were acting? Yes, acting for votes. Thank you for watching.